Canto 2, chapter 6, text 40 and 41. They are together, so it's a very long purport. Please repeat. Vishutam kevala gyanam Rajaksam yagavastitam Satyam purnam anadi antam Nirgunam vityam advayam Please repeat. Vishutam kevalam gyanam Rajaksam yakavastitam Satyam purnam anadi antam Nirgunam nityam advayam Vishutam kevala gyanam Rajaksam yakavastitam Satyam purnam anadi antam Nirgunam nityam advayam We should hum without any material tinge Kevalam pure and perfect Gyanam knowledge Prachak all pervading Samyak in fullness, avastitam, situated, satyam, true, panam, absolute, anadi, without any beginning, antam, and so also without any end, nirgunam, Devoid of material modes. Nityam, eternal. Advayam, without any rival. Rishe, O Narada, O great sage. Vidanti, they can only understand. Munayaha, the great thinkers. Prashanta, pacified, Atma, self, Indriya, senses, Ashaya, sheltered, Yadha, wild, Tat, that, Eva, certainly, Asat, untenable, Tarkai, arguments, Tira dieta disappears. Viplutam distorted. Translation and purport of Shiva Prabhupada. The personality of Godhead is pure, being free from all contaminations of material tinges. He is the absolute truth and the embodiment of full and perfect knowledge. He is all-pervading without any beginning or end, and without rival, O Narada, <clears throat> O great sage. The great thinkers can know him when completely freed from all material hankerings, when sheltered un under undisturbed conditions of the senses. Otherwise, by untenable arguments, all is distorted and the Lord disappears from our sight. Please repeat, the personality of Godhead is pure, being free from all contaminations of material tinges. He is the absolute truth and the embodiment of full and perfect knowledge. He is all pervading without beginning or end, without rival, O Narada, O great sage. The great thinkers can know him when completely freed from all material hankerings 
and when sheltered under undisturbed conditions of the senses. Otherwise, by untenable arguments, all is distorted. The law disappears from our sight. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shiva Prabhupada. So this is a quite long purport, there's two verses here together. So I'll, I'll read the purport and I'll stop between so I can just um, explain as I go. Purport. Here is an estimation of the Lord, apart from his transcendental activities in the temporary material creations. Mayavada philosophy tried to designate the Lord as contaminated by a material body when he accepts forms of incarnation. This sort of interpolation is completely denied herein by the explanation that the Lord's position is pure and unalloyed in all circumstances. According to Mayavada philosophy, the spirit soul, when covered by nescience, is designated as jiva. But when freed from such ignorance or nescience, he merges in the impersonal existence of the absolute truth. But here it is said that the Lord is eternally the symbol of full, full and perfect knowledge. This is his speciality, perpetual freedom from all material contaminations. This distinguishes the Lord from the individual, common living entities who have the aptitude for being subordinated by Nessians and thus becoming material designated. In the Vedas, it is said that the Lord is Vignanam Anandam, full of bliss and knowledge. The conditioned souls never to be compared to Him because such individual souls have the tendency to become contaminated. Although after liberation, the living entity can become one with the same quality of the of existence as the Lord. His very tendency to become contaminated, which the Lord never has, makes the individual living entity different, different from the Lord. In the Vedas it is said, Shutam or Papa Vitham, the individual Atma becomes polluted by sin, but the Lord is never contaminated by sins. The Lord is compared by the powerful sun. The sun is never contaminated by anything infectious because it is so powerful. On the contrary, infected things are sterilized by the rays of the sun. Similarly, the Lord is never contaminated by sins. On the contrary, the sinful living entities become sterilized by contact with the Lord. This means that the Lord is all pervading like the sun, as much as the word prachak is used in this verse. Nothing is excluded from the existence of the Lord's potential expansions. The Lord is within everything and is all covering also, without being disturbed by the activities of the individual souls. He is therefore infinite and the living entities are infinitesimal. In the Vedas it is said that only the Lord alone exists and all others' existences depend on Him. He is the generating reservoir for everyone's existential capacity. He is the supreme truth of all other category truths. He is the source of everyone's opulence. Therefore, no one can equal Him in opulence being full of opulences, namely wealth, fame, strength, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. Certainly, he is the Supreme Person. And because he is a person, he has many personal qualities, although he is transcendental to the material modes. 
We have already discussed the statement, Itam Bhuta Guno Hari, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam 1.7.10. His transcendental qualities are so attractive that even liberated souls, Atmaramas, are also attracted by them. Although possessed of all personal qualities, he is nevertheless omnipotent. Therefore, personally, he has nothing to do, for everything is being carried out by his omnipotent energies. This is confirmed by Vedic mantras, Parashaya, Shaktir, Vidhi, Daiva, Shuyate, Swabhiviki, Nana, Bhala, Kriya, Cha. This suggests the specific spiritual form which can never be experienced by the material senses. He can be seen only when the senses are purified by devotional service. Yam Ebaisha Ritnu Tena Labya. As such, there are basic differences between the Lord and the living entities in so many respects. No one can be compared to the Lord, as the Vedas declare, Ekam Evat Vityam Dhamma Dvaitadva Bhayam Bhavati. The Lord has no competitor and he has nothing to fear from any other being, nor can anyone be equal to him, although he is the root of all other beings. There are basic differences between him and other beings. Otherwise, there would have been no necessity for the statement in the previous verse that no one can know him 100% as he is. Nayam vidanti tatve now. That no one can fully understand him is explained also in this verse, but the qualification for understanding some degree is mentioned here. Only the prashantas or the unalloyed devotees of the Lord can know him to a greater extent. The reason that the devotees have no demands in their lives but to be obedient servants of the Lord, while all others, namely the empiric philosophers, the mystics, and the fruit tree workers all basically have some demand and as such they cannot be pacified. The fruit tree worker wants the reward for his work. The mystic wants some perfection of life. The empiric philosopher wants to merge in the existence of the Lord. Somehow or other, as long as there is demand for sense satisfaction, there is no chance for pacification. On the contrary, by unnecessary dry speculative arguments, the whole matter becomes distorted. Thus the Lord moves still further away from our understanding. The dry speculators, however, because of their following the principles of austerity and penance, can have knowledge of the impersonal features of the Lord to some extent. But there is no chance of the understanding this unlimited form as Govinda because only the Amalatmanas or the completely sinless persons can accept pure devotion service to the Lord as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 7.28 Esham Tvanta Gatam Papam Jananam Punya Karmanayam Te Dvandva Moha Niyamukta Bhajante Mam Dritha Vrataha I'll read the verse again. The personality of Godhead is pure, being free from all contam contaminations of material tinges. He is the absolute truth and the embodiment of full and perfect knowledge. He is all-pervading, without beginning or end, and without rival. O Narada, O great sage, the great thinkers can know him when completely freed from all material hankerings when sheltered under the undisturbed conditions of the senses. Otherwise, by untenable arguments, all is distorted and the Lord disappears from our sight. This is a long purport and um, one thing I've noticed right away, you may have noticed also that Srila Prabhupada tends to repeat certain philosophical truths in the purport. Uh, strong emphasis 
that Krishna is unaffected and the living entities are different and the understanding, the Lord's position, if not presented or understood properly, can be a distortion. So this is, um, covers quite a few philosophical concepts here. Um, the understanding, what I'm getting, is that Krishna, being omnipotent, transcendental, absolute truth, is not affected by the conditions of the material world, namely Raja, Tama, Sattva, the, 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 the coverings of this material energy which is really one of its potencies. So the Supreme Lord is above all this. Just like in um, ordinary example, um, a president or a king is not affected by the conditions of, of a jail or prison establishment. He's above, he's above uh, the um, conditions. Not only that, they set the rules. So similarly, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the ultimate, the cause of all causes, Ishwaraha, Paramaha, Krishnaha, Satchitananda, Vigraha, Anadi, Radhi, Govindaha, Sarva, Karana, Karana. The cause of all causes, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Parama Ishwara, the Supreme, Supreme Controller. This is a very, very important verse. I often quote this because uh, It really addresses Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although he establishes himself in the Bhagavad Gita as the Supreme Brahman, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So for our understanding, Arjuna received all these um, divine instructions. Krishna explained himself. So we can have a proper and clear understanding who Krishna is according to our capacity. Just like in the previous verse, um, Vyasadeva and Srila Prabhupada in his purport explains that no one can really understand Krishna, the supreme, incomplete. God is unlimited. Even he himself has difficulty to understand his ever-expanding, vast creation. His, Krishna is ongoing, ex- <coughs> ever-expanding. So he is his unlimited in potencies and his power. He's got six opulences, which is also beyond our imagination. His opulence, his renunciation, um, his, um, his beauty. So we can, we can just have some understanding that his, his, his wealth and beauty, renunciation, all these beautiful qualities and wealth opulences of Krishna are unlimited. So he can never, never bring, we can never bring him down to our platform. Unfortunately, this is when the distortion comes. Mayavada philosophers, as usual, they, they try to interpret, distort this understanding. They think God is, uh, uh, has a tendency to become contaminated and come down to a human platform and uh, have an incarnation here, or incarnations uh, because of contamination. But um, this is not the fact. And this verse establishes again and reinforces the um, conclusions of the Vedas that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is untinged by these um, material qualities. He is above these. And only persons who uh, attained transcendental qualities, who are undisturbed by, by the senses and, and material conditions, completely pure, self-satisfied, Atmarama, the great souls, who have very deep realization of the Supreme by love and devotion, not only scriptural understanding, but actual deep realization of the self and the relationship between the jiva and the supreme. And uh, so this is very important to understand, even as students of Vaishnava Siddhanta, we are sadhakas, we have to understand, we have to clarify these misconceptions that God is not 
subjected to contamination. He is the supreme God. Just the, just the word God brings respect, understanding that he is something extraordinary. He's not an ordinary jiva. So the jiva um, is, like Sri Prabhupada says in the purport, that the jiva has a tendency to be contaminated. And jivas are infinitesimal. They, they are very uh, micro particles of the Supreme. And our only duty, only business, to connect with Him with love and devotion, with, with our service, with our connection with Him. That's, that, that is our perfection when we connect with Krishna in humble, loving, devotional service to His representatives, to the Vaishnavas. Uh, and uh, keep keeping ourselves in devotion service. Um, the Lord is, as Srila Prabhupada emphasized, that he's not affected, just like the sun is not affected by contaminations of this world, rather sterilize. You can see uh, a contaminated water, contaminated water can be sterilized by the sun. The sun is all powerful. So Srila Prabhupada explains and emphasizes and repeats these concepts as we read the purport that Krishna is um, not affected by these conditions. Srila Prabhupada says in this particular paragraph that no one can fully understand him is explained also in this verse but the qualification for understanding to some degree is mentioned here only the prashantas or the unalloyed devotees of the Lord can know him to a greater extent the reason is that the devotees have no demands in their lives but to obedient servants of the Lord while all others namely the empiric philosophers the mystics and the fruity workers all basically have some demand and such they cannot be pacified. Unless one has pure devotion, it will be very difficult to comprehend even um, the position of the living entities and Krishna and their relationship with each other. We can have some basic understanding to some extent. And we can, un- we can see, as uh, Srila Prabhupada says, that uh, un- until we have some material tinge or contamination within our hearts, even if it's subtle, just like um, we have, Prabhupada explains, uh, the fruity workers or the mystics or the, yo- the so-called yogis who very much are uh, uh, either fascinated or occupied with um, satisfying or fulfilling, they uh, trying to fulfill their um, material desires. Uh, they want opulences or powers or some kind of fruits. Um, some may um, have more sattvic qualities, goodness qualities, the penances, austerities. So they can kind of understand something about these impersonal features, but they cannot have an access to the, to the understanding that Krishna is actually the Supreme Brahman, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, not to speak of um, understanding his qualities, pastimes and form, and um, not to speak of tasting that loving devotion, which is only reserved for the bhaktas, the devotees of Krishna. Um, uh, having the opportunity to be engaged in devotion service is extraordinary. Um, seeing through the eyes of the scriptures, we can see that um, uh, chanting of the holy names, engaging in the service of Vaishnavas, the spiritual master, the living entities go through all, a long journey, many lifetimes, to come to this point. Especially in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there are many mentioning uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, um, especially regarding Haridas Thakur, the glories of the holy name, glories of chanting of the holy names, that devotees who have the opportunity, they, they, they 
they went through all different processes in their past lives, including impersonal meditation, CV appendices, study of all the Vedas, to come to this point that we have the opportunity to utter the pure name, the divine names of Krishna, the, uh, the holy names of Krishna. So we have this opportunity to purify ourselves, understand who Krishna is according to our capacity. We can, like, uh, like Shri Prabhupada says also, that we cannot fully understand God who is unlimited, but um, we can understand him according to our devotion, to the degree of our devotion, um, and the degree of the blessings we get. So a devotee is aspiring to, to, to be purified as much as possible, attract the mercy of the spiritual master and Krishna, Goranga Mahaprabhu, and by these blessings we can have we can, uh, we can be assured of some progress in realization. That's why we sing every morning to the spiritual master. We start with that. Yasya prasada, Bhagavad prasada. Without the mercy, without the blessings of Guru, we cannot understand. We cannot make any advancement. So, these are all simple truths. We have to contemplate every day, meditate, not to speak of the shikshashaka, trying to go deeply, not just superficially. It's not just a recitation for the recitation. This is actually a deep meditation. Every day we should contemplate on this. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the entire Vaishnava Siddhanta within that eight slokas. Um, and uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, all the great personalities giving us these prayers. So we can actually not only realize, but meditate on this on a daily basis. So naturally, um, we are very fortunate. Um, we have this mercy opportunity. So we should not only grateful, we should, but also we should take it seriously, sincerely trying to purify ourselves, trying to become a quality Vaishnava, a Vaishnavi. We should um, um, qualify ourselves so we become good instruments, especially when it comes to philosophical debates. We have to present the Siddhanta so clearly, uh, not only logically, but uh, with, with Shastric references, but also with our pure devotion to Krishna. Otherwise, if we have an argument that we cannot kind of defend, and then uh, that's not very good. And that's what happens to the Mayavada, because they distort the meaning, they have a misunderstanding, they think God can be contaminated and it can come down to the so-called human platform and have incarnations. And no. And God, as Prabhupada emphasizes in this purport so many times, cannot be contaminated. He always remains the Supreme Brahman, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the living entities uh, have to connect, reconnect with loving devotional service. We are never separate from Krishna, but we have to realize our connection with our devotion and um, practice and remain in that, being pacified. On the other hand, Empiric philosophers, yogis, fruit tea workers, karmakanda, all, all kinds of personalities who are searching for the truth, but they're being misled. Uh, they're not truly sincere seekers. Because they're only sin sincere seekers, generally get the message. Somehow they get an opportunity, either in this life or next life. Uh, just like when we are distributing Srila Prabhupada's books, we, uh, we're giving an opportunity to people we're giving them a chance. It's like giving them a passport. Going back to Godhead, so giving a passport. But then we have to acquire a visa, and that visa is to approach a bona fide spiritual master and render service to him and qualify ourselves. So we get the visa. Once we get the visa, we're ready, <laughs> ready to go. So it's a very similar uh, concept. So we, we have a great opportunity, and now we should share that, distribute that. And by that process, by that humble service, 
preaching activities on the behalf of Guru and Goranga, we also get the blessings of the Sri Parampara, the disciplic succession. And this is one of the secrets of advancement, knowing how to please the spiritual master in the best way. And we can see um, there's a sense of urgency to spread Krishna consciousness. And, and the great Mahajanas, the great personalities, not to speak of our recent great Mahabhagavatas, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti, Saranta Saraswati Goswami, Prabhupada, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, not to speak of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, all great personalities back to, to the Goswamis, Mahaprabhu, and even before Madhvendra Puri, even Madhvacharya in our Sampradaya, they're very, very particular about defeating Mayavada. Not to speak of Ramanuja in the Sri Sampradaya, they also very, very vigilant to defend the Vaishnava Siddhanta, the proper understanding. And the Mayavadi confusion is always there for the living entities until they are pure until they actually become purified, because the, the, the living entities are conditioned and very difficult to understand things properly, clearly, unless one is guided carefully by the great personalities. Therefore, we have all the um, uh, guidelines set by the Mahajanas, uh, set by our spiritual masters. Individually and collectively, we have a a program to follow. Uh, on the other hand, um, if we really want to attract the mercy of Guru and Goranga, then we have to be intelligent also. We have to be very sincere, find ways. And we all know, Srila Prabhupada said, we are preaching Krishna consciousness, um, we are attracting the mercy of Goranga Mahaprabhu and the entire parampara. It's such an urgency, an emergency. So. Um, According to our capacity, trying to spread Krishna consciousness, pray to Srila Prabhupada so we can get empowered, we get mercy, um, so we can present the Vaishnava Siddhanta, so we can appeal to the intellect and to the heart of the uh, jivas out there in the material world, trying to um, help them to understand, encourage them to take these books and contemplate on the message. Uh, generally we give them the books, encourage them to read, and, um, and Srila Prabhupada will continue helping them through their transcendental purports. And out of those many, many thousands of living entities, one may come forward, a few fortunate ones come forward and appreciate the Siddhanta and take shelter of Srila Prabhupada's process. Uh, so this is very important for us to understand. First of all, this purport uh, preaches, Srila Prabhupada preaches to us, of course, just to clarify, um, making sure that we understand Krishna's position. Uh, God is not contaminated. He cannot be affected by inferior energy. He is above. He is a transcendental supreme Brahman. And, and also, uh, clarifying that the Mayavadi is distorting the meaning. So they, therefore they don't have the understanding. As Srila Prabhupada and Vyasadeva says in the verse, uh, otherwise by untenable arguments all is distorted and the law disappears from our sight. So we, as devotees we want to keep Krishna, Krishna in our sight through devotional service, through chanting the holy names, through the archana, um, and service to Vaishnav. We want to stimulate our devotional service by constant hearing and chanting, Shavanam, Kirtanam, the nine processes. Sri Prahlad Maharaj explains it very clearly in the seventh canto um, <clears throat> that um, uh, we should be vigilant, philosophically uh, convinced and, and not to be affected by so-called arguments. Uh, and Krishna is also testing us. He wants us to become conversant with the Vaishnava philosophy. We don't, we don't, we're not here for just sentiments. 
And there may be some sentimental attraction, but actually we are here to understand the absolute truth and live according to those principles. Um, so this is a very important um, message in this purport to clarify, Srila Prabhupada clarifying that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is not affected by the contamination of the material world, and he's a person, is a divine person, everything is emanating from him. And and um, and the Mayavadis, as usual, they distort the meanings. Um, they do not understand the position of the Lord. They have a very impersonal and offensive attitude towards the Supreme. Uh, claiming that God can be contaminated, the social Vyasadev and Srila Prabhupada in his purport defeats all this, clarifies it. And also that only persons who are Atmaramas, who are completely satisfied, who are pacified with devotion service, completely pure, absolutely pure in their heart, they can have the correct perception of the Lord and His potencies. Um, for us, sadhakas, we, are, we hear from the authorities and uh, follow the instructions. And that's how we can make progress. We attract the blessings of Guru and Gauranga. So Vaishnava uh, understanding is that we, we take shelter of the spiritual master and take personal guidance from him. And that way we can also gradually become purified. And we have a much more clear understanding. Not to speak of, um, feeling and realizing. One thing is we understand the scripture and we're trying to hear from Guru, but by practice, by application, we can also become purified. Feel those emotions, not to speak of very exalted devotional service. Just like um, yesterday, we're discussing the pastimes of Shimate Radharani, such an exalted platform, such an exalted um, pastimes that um, ordinary mind cannot really appreciate properly, comprehend these things, and often we can make offenses. We have to be very careful with these, because um, they, only a very, very pure source, can, um, liberated source can understand these things. So we should have a great own reverence and appreciation. Srila Prabhupada gave us so much. The, the ultimate gave us the Raja Bhumi Dham, the beautiful pastimes. And this can only be understood when we clear up all these misconceptions, what the Mayavad is projecting to the world. Um, Srila Prabhupada said in one purport in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that uh, even the preachers of Krishna consciousness sometimes perplexed because so much Mayavada dogma and, and projection in the world, in the educational system and every way that, that uh, people, people are getting confused whether they can, they can continue understanding God is a person and worship Him and love Him or just go through a very impersonal offensive way. Um, so you can see um, we, therefore we have to be very very uh, strong in our philosophical understanding, so we can counteract this Mayavada doctrines. It's a bit of a, a warrior spirit when we are preaching. We have to kind of use intelligence, knowledge, um, and purity. Purity always has to be there, because if you don't have the purity, um, scriptural knowledge does not have, have an effect. Everything has to be there. So we have to give our whole life to Krishna, and then we can preach correctly, properly. There will be an effect. There will be an effect, an impact on people. And that's what we want. We want to help others to be happy and come to Krishna's lotus feet, understand who He is, and give up all these nonsense, Mayavada misconceptions. The Mayavada is always trying to minimize the Supreme. That's why such an offense um, that um, they, they even call God 
Maya. That's what called Maya, Vadi. See, so God's personality of Maya, such a misunderstanding and offense. So that, therefore, Maya Vada. Uh, my body teachings are very dangerous for Vaishnava student. We have to be very careful. Um, Sarva Bonabhattacharya and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had this uh, conversation. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was warning the Vaishnavas that um, one has to be very careful with Mayavada teachings because it's so contaminating, it's confusing. Even the bodies, advanced bodies can get confused. So we have to be very, very vigilant. Uh, the great fortune is that we can keep each other's association and hear about Krishna constantly, reinforce Srila Prabhupada's teachings so we can remain fixed and steady, nishta, nishta. Then we can come to a higher, a clearing stage. We can actually become offenseless and we can take shelter of the Holy Name sincerely from the heart. <coughs> Thank you, Srila Prabhupada. Any comments or questions? Obviously, uh, so the question was that um, Krishna, um, um, when we offer uh, items of service to Krishna, when he gets contaminated with our impurities, uh, with our imperfect offerings. But Krishna, like, like this whole purport, really, Krishna is not affected by anything like that. See? Yeah. So what, what he see, he's able to, like Prabhupada says, an example, sterilizing. The sun can sterilize everything. So even if you're approaching with impurities, yes. we get purified. Yes. That's what happened with the gopis, in which you see Krishna's pastimes. They initially, some of them had material desires. They wanted to enjoy Krishna. But then they approached Krishna immediately, had the pure, unalloyed love, immediately. So Krishna can purify you. If you're approaching him sincerely, even if you are contaminated and you think that your service is contaminating, yes. Krishna's not contaminated with our service. He's purifying us. So you come forward, okay, if you're not, he purifies you. And that's what happened to the gopis also. They, they, as soon as they saw Krishna, not to speak of Dhruva Maharaj, he also had material desires, but when you, when Lord Narayan Vishnu appeared, immediately got con, con, uh, purified. So Krishna is never affected by, by our impurities. Yeah, I know, but I don't want to get into mentality to think, oh, Krishna doesn't... That's... <coughs> if yeah. he doesn't get contaminated, then I lower my standard just to, to knowing that... That's, that's what we have to work on individually, to make sure we have the right consciousness. Yes. A very good point, because... Um, you know, apparatus, offenses there. Yeah. Just like when we chant Japa, we are conscious of, yeah. that's why we chant the 10 offenses in the morning. Yeah. So we can counteract, at least make an effort yeah. to purify our chanting. Because we are offending Krishna, of course, because of our condition. So when we are conscious of it, then Krishna says, okay, keep chanting, keep chanting, keep chanting. So we keep chanting. Mm -hmm. So same with service, we keep serving, and eventually it becomes pure. But Krishna is an uh, all-loving personality. He's giving us shelter. He's not contaminated by us. And, but we should be careful not to think that way, that we can just offend him as yeah. it's fair to think. So that's why I'm thinking, <coughs> yeah. it pleases Krishna for yeah. us to yeah. offer a more pure mm. yeah. offering. Yeah. Is we that should. what I can say? Yeah, it's, yes. Maybe we, I mean, 
I mean, he's not contaminated. He's not contaminated. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's our business. That's our duty towards him, too. Yeah. Especially in our stage, to follow the rules and regulations, of, yeah. uh, to keep ourselves pure, acceptable. So when Krishna sees, well, the effort, effort is made, then he gives us the mercy. Mm -hmm. Then we become purified. Yeah. By the mercy. By the mercy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.